Thursday, June 25th, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So Mervyn King, the former governor of the Bank of England, the man who was in charge during the great financial crisis, has warned of a debt time bomb. He's pretty much spoken like I have been speaking the last six months or so, maybe a little less, uh, and also over the years about the situation in the markets, in the system. Uh, I will also reference uh, one of his books he wrote about four years ago. There you go. Uh, the End of Alchemy by Mervyn King, uh, where he uh, gives his solution to, to the system. And he, he speaks quite honestly for a central banker, I think. Uh, but uh, I guess it's easier when you're out of that position a little bit like Greenspan. But let's go through the story here. The Telegraph is covering it. So I'm gonna go through this. I think it's quite important. Coming out of a elite central banker, uh, uh, so to speak. So let's go through the story here and then we'll look at the markets. The markets are getting very interesting, of course. We're seeing a lot of uh, news stories out of the U.S. related to the health crisis. And that's something I want to briefly touch upon as well. So here we go. Uh, COVID debt time bomb could trigger a new financial crisis, warns Mervyn King. Former Bank of England Governor Lord King, he's a lord now, says uh, defaults could be the trigger of another financial crisis down the road. Uh, just before I start here, I wanted to let you know, uh, I did a presentation on my keynote and I put my conclusions uh, of that presentation about what's going on in terms of the health crisis, as you can see here, in my Monaco64.net uh, blog. And uh, you can read it. It's not long. Uh, and it gives you my uh, views on what's going on, what the end game is. So anyway, let's continue here. It says uh, the world is facing a coronavirus debt time bomb as countries borrow trillions of pounds to fight the pandemic. Former Bank of England Governor Mervyn King has warned Lord King, who led the bank through the global financial crisis, of 08 09 before stepping down in 2013 said companies and countries alike could be sunk by the weight of their new loans potentially triggering another meltdown that would snuff out any recovery the crossbench peer told the telegraph's planet normal podcast which you can listen to on the audio play above that the virus has struck a global economy made vulnerable by already high levels of borrowing. Uh, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to uh, access this. It looks like it's a podcast from The Telegraph. I didn't realize that. But uh, be as it may, you can pause my uh, video and read this article. Uh, or you could subscribe to The Telegraph. I think it's a, a pound a month or a pound a week for the first uh, four weeks or eight weeks or something. And then it changes to two pounds a week. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, but I don't think you need to listen to the podcast. Uh, I think The Telegraph does a good job of saying uh, his main thoughts here. So let's continue. He said, I think the immediate concern facing us over the next few years is that the very high levels of debt we entered the COVID-19 crisis with are going to be exacerbated by even higher levels of debt. So he's saying here we already had uh, high levels of debt and dangerous debt, as you're going to see in a minute. So this is only making it worse. Yeah, we had the everything bubble. He continues, so I think we can expect to see many defaults over the next few years as businesses struggle and many governments in various parts of the world will also struggle to repay their debts. So I think defaults could be the trigger of another financial crisis down the road. 
So quite amazing. Uh, and uh, I'm not surprised, of course, at least he's being honest. Of course, the current central bankers who are running all the different central banks, they're not going to say that they're trying to uh, keep things going. The bank's current chief, Andrew Bailey himself, a protege of the former governor, has insisted that UK banks are strong enough to both survive the crisis and maintain lending through the outbreak after strengthening their reserves since the taxpayer bailouts of 2008. But Lord King said banks in Europe and China are very fragile and warned that it is always risky to say it's safe. He added, what seems to be initially small losses can easily multiply and expand. And why is that? Well, derivatives. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, he's been there and he's seen it. And he got to wear the t-shirt in 0809. So it continues here. He said, I think banks are going to realize they will experience significant losses. Not so much on the loans they've made since... Uh, the crisis became evident, but on the pre-existing loans that looked very safe when they were made, but now look a lot more dubious given the challenges facing many businesses through no fault of their own that have arisen as a result of COVID-19 and the responses governments have made to it. The peers' comments follow warnings from lobby group The City UK in May that UK companies may be shouldering as much as 105 billion of unsustainable debts, including up to 20 billion of loans issued through the Treasury's taxpayer backed coronavirus business interruption loan scheme. Bank of England officials warned last year about so called leverage loans. I warned about leverage loans. I made a few videos about leverage loans given out to risky companies across the world with then Governor Mark Carney saying the $14 trillion market had all the hallmarks of subprime mortgage bubble that triggered the financial crisis. Leverage loans are basically uh, bonds, but they're not uh, securitized. And I remember making uh, a few videos about this uh, warning and uh, from what I remember as well is that the amount was a lot less than 14 trillion. So it looks like it's probably gone up even more. Lord King, a supporter of Brexit, added that the euro was another source of potential crisis unless member countries commit to full fiscal union. Yeah, we've got still the... Uh, the German High Court or Constitutional Court uh, and the conflict with the ECB about QE, that could be uh, a problem. I think that question's still up in the air. Uh, the ECB has a few more uh, months to come up with a good excuse for the German Constitutional Court. And so he continues about the European Union and full fiscal union. What does that mean? It means giving the European Union a, a treasury and a power to tax like the U.S. Treasury. Right now, all the different countries in the EU have that power. So there's no centralized power to issue uh, debt uh, like the U.S. Treasury. Uh, that would be very difficult, though. I think the Germans, the Dutch, the Finnish, uh, the northern countries that are more frugal would have a big problem with, ha with having a EU wide uh, treasury. This is what he says concerning this. Unless they take that route, financial markets will always be du dubious that the euro will be guaranteed to hold together. And therefore, there could emerge new sovereign debt crises down the road. Lord King also took aim at central banks around the world for making a serious error by responding to the crisis with a major expansion of money printing, which he warned isn't the answer to every cause of slower economic growth. I wonder if he would have done the same uh, or if he would have followed his uh, thinking uh, right now. Uh, we've heard from Andrew Bailey, the current governor, that uh, if the Bank of England hadn't uh, 
come up with the 200 billion uh, in March that the UK government could have uh, almost uh, its uh, finances could have collapsed. So it's easy for him to say that here. Am I saying I don't agree with him? Uh, no, but uh, all I'm saying is uh, he might have thought differently if he he was a governor of the Bank of England right now. Threadneedle Street has responded to the pandemic and subsequent lockdown with 300 billion. Yeah, they added another 100 billion last week of QE where it creates new money to buy bonds, taking the bank's balance sheet to around a third of the size of the UK economy. Mr. Bailey has slowed the pace of purchases uh, and warned that markets must not become reliant on the central bank. Lord King said people have got into their heads the idea that if the economy is growing slowly, then whatever the cause of that slow growth, the answer has to be more central banking easing, whether it is negative interest rates or just printing more money. So here's how this article ends. And he says, Mervyn King, governor of the Bank of England, actually saying that, uh, easing monetary policy is not always the solution and i agree with him well the best solution really is not to have a central bank uh, and go back to sound money and to allow the market to set interest rates but let's see what he says here at the end this is a problem facing central banks around the world they have all acquiesced in the view that the reason their economies are growing slowly is because the central bank is not doing sufficient to stimulate spending. And I think that is a serious error. Agree 100% with him. I think uh, one of the major things that could be done also to help is monetary reform, sound money, go back to a gold standard, uh, make uh, the state smaller, less of a welfare state, less of a warfare state as well for some countries. Yeah, just shrink the size of government and let the private sector thrive. Less taxation, of course. Uh, but that's not the way we're going right now. But uh, it is possible we could go that way if this system collapses, like he says it could. So one of the things Mervyn King said in his book, The End of Alchemy, here you go, I showed it to you earlier. Uh, was on page 261 where uh, he actually talked about the possible elimination of fractional reserve banking. And he said it was the proposal put forward in 1933 uh, as the Chicago plan. Uh, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's an interesting concept. And I've spoken about that, of course, uh, as it pertains to Murray Rothbard and the case for 100% gold dollar and uh, sound banking. So uh, just wanted to put that through there in the context of what Mervyn King is saying uh, today. So there you go. I thought that was very interesting. So let's look at the markets now. It's 8.20 uh, a.m. London. Yesterday was uh, an interesting day. As I said, there's a lot of stories about what's going on in the States, as you can see here from the Wall Street Journal, from, from the FT. So it looks like the mainstream is pushing this again. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen here in the UK now that we're starting to reopen. Uh, it's going to put a lot of doubt uh, on people's and businesses' minds. So, yeah, um, the doubt... Dropped 710 points yesterday, 2.7%. S&P dropped uh, 81 points. It's still above 3,000, though. It's at 3,050. And the NASDAQ dropped 222. Uh, all uh, dropped over 2%. I see that the, the small caps, the Russell, dropped 2.8% as well. So right now, we've got spot gold at 1766.70. That's up 65 yeah, gold had a good day yesterday. It did come back down. So what happened to gold? Why did it come down? We made a new high for the year at 1780 almost. Well, I think the uh, 
Cabal, the bullion banks, the powers that be, were having a tough time with gold. So what they did, they kept silver down most of the day, smashed it quite a bit on the uh, opening of the official markets in the U.S. And I think that was the only reason why uh, gold didn't go higher. But I, I don't think they're going to succeed in keeping uh, the precious metals down. Uh, maybe they will in the short term. In the longer term, I think it's uh, very difficult um, because, as Mervyn King said, there's a lot of instability in the system, a lot of debt. The only way they can keep this going is through more debt. It seems to be the only thing the central bankers know how to do. Uh, and the other uh, alternative, of course, is to pull the plug, and that would be even worse uh, or just as bad. Instead of getting hyperinflation and inflation, you're going to get a complete, a complete collapse. And even in a collapse, you want to have precious metals because there's no counterparty risk. So where is the stock market this morning? Well, as I said yesterday in my video, at the time, the Dow was unchanged, the Dow future. And I said, by the time you watch this video, it could be up 200 or down 200. Uh, and lo and behold, it, it went down. Uh, it could have gone up. But right now, uh, Dow Futures, 822 uh, AM London is down 300 points or just over a percent at 25,170. S&P is at 3,020, down 30, down 1%. So stock market still under pressure. Uh, this morning, uh, sterling uh, or cable unchanged at 124.23. Uh, the currencies were under pressure yesterday, so the dollar did well. Uh, the euro is down 0.2 of a percent at 112.32, and the dollar is unchanged versus the yen at 107.07. Crude oil, not surprisingly, uh, has come off from that 40 level. We're now at 37.55, down 1.28%. And to finish off, the 10-year yield uh, is down two basis points at 0.66. So not surprising the yields are dropping here. But uh, we need to keep an eye on it because in March, at the heights of the uh, financial meltdown, we actually saw yields spiking higher bond prices going down as the stock market was going down as well so that would be a bad sign for the system overall so there you go uh, if you enjoyed this video uh, please hit the like button uh, make sure you share it far and wide think about subscribing uh, to the channel if you haven't yet and you can also follow me on twitter facebook parlay and all these other platforms below here I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.